I'm Rev. Jake Zabe, and welcome to Children's Bible Stories. Alright children, and welcome back to Children's Church History Stories. Today we're going to do what I've titled the story of the Lion, the Turk, and the Holy Land. So the Lion is King Richard I of England, known as Richard the Lionheart because of his bravery. The Turk was the Muslim leader Saladin, who had battled with Richard. And the Holy Land is, of course, the land of Israel. So, this story takes place as part of the Christian Crusades. So, the Crusades were a series of wars in the turn of the century in the early 1000s when the Christians fought with the Muslims to take control of the Holy Land. So the original Crusade had taken place in 1096 to 1099 in which the Christians had fully conquered the Holy Land and had established Christian kingdoms in Israel. Then, after that, the Muslims came back and fought against them, and the Christians had another battle. It was what known then as the Second Crusade, taking place from 1147 to 1149. And now the Third Crusades would take place from 1189 to 1192. So in the year 1187, the new Muslim leader, al Makik al Nasir. Salad and Din Yusuf, known as Saladin to the west, led his armies and conquered the Christian city of Acre. This was a port city. He then went on and conquered Jerusalem, now bringing it under the control of the Muslim armies. So, in 1187, uh, group of Christian kings in Europe prompted by Pope Gregory VIII met together to discuss the possibility of a third crusade. These three kings were King Henry II of England, King Philip Augustus of France, and the 70-year-old Emperor Friedrich I of the Holy Roman Empire and they met together to discuss joining their armies together for a third crusade. Present at these meetings was the young Richard, the Prince of England. And so in 1187 these three kings were ready to go on a crusade to liberate the Holy Land. But this didn't happen because Philip and Henry got into fights over territories in France, and the two of them went to war instead, preventing the Third Crusade from taking place. In 1189, though, Henry died, and his throne was passed on to his son, King Richard I, who was passionate for a crusade and led the Third Crusade joined by King Philip from France. So after much travelling around, finally, in the year 1191, two years after they had declared the Third Crusade, Richard and Philip and their armies finally arrived in the Holy Land, first landing at the port city of Tyre. They then went down to liberate the port city of Acre. Now Richard, during these crusades would earn the reputation of being not only a very brave man but also a very smart man. In fact, the siege of Acre only lasted four days. The walls of Acre were near impossible to penetrate and so he sent some of his men to dig tunnels under the walls to weaken the stability so that then when they fired their ballista missiles, so these are like giant crossbow kind of things, they'd hit the wall where they'd been weakened from the tunnels and the wall started to collapse. 
Richard then declared that he'd give four pieces of gold to anyone who was able to carry off a stone from the wall. And his men, fueled by the bravery of their king and the promise of gold, rushed the city. And even though they were under fire from the Muslim armies, they managed to tear apart the wall of Acre, bringing to end the Muslim occupation of Acre. This then forced Saladin and his troops to flee. At this point in time, Philip, the King of France, disappeared back to France, taking the opportunity to try and steal some territories away from Richard, who was busy occupied in the Holy Land. It was also at this time that Richard, who was actually a nice and kind leader, wrote to Saladin and offered him a truce to bring an end to the war and to establish a peace treaty. At this point in time, though, Saladin turned down the treaty. This then prompted Richard to respond by killing 3,000 Muslims, which just angered Saladin. Following this, Richard led his armies down the coastlands towards Jerusalem to try and take back Jerusalem. Saladin grabbed a massive army of 80,000 soldiers, three times larger than the army of Richard, and tried to ambush Richard on his way to Jerusalem. Yet Richard was so clever that he managed to outmaneuver Saladin's army. And it is at this point in time that he earns the title of Lionheart, because the poet Ambrosius says that during the battle, Richard led the charge against the Muslims' army, throwing the Muslims off their own horses. He was that brave and strong. And he managed to defeat Saladin in this big battle. It was at this point that Saladin decided that he would never again take on Richard directly. This, however, was not yet the end of the Third Crusade. Richard would go on to capture many other port cities, and he would lead two attacks against the city of Jerusalem, attempting to liberate it. However, Richard would call off both attacks. The first attack he called off because the French soldiers refused to follow an English king. And since their king had gone back to France, they weren't willing to fight. And so Richard had to pull back and he couldn't fight and liberate Jerusalem that day. The second time Richard tried to siege Jerusalem, the Templar knights warned him that even if Richard could manage to capture Jerusalem, and drive the Muslims away, as soon as Richard went back to England, the Muslims would just come back and they'd lose the city again. And so, Richard had to admit that he couldn't liberate Jerusalem. Because even if he did manage to liberate it and drive the Muslims away, the Muslims would just come back as soon as he left. If Richard wanted to prevent the Muslims from taking back Jerusalem, he'd have to give up being king of England and become the king of Jerusalem and stay there for the rest of his life. But William had to return to England. Not only was Philip stealing his territories in France, but also his naughty brother John had taken the throne of England and was oppressing the people in England. That's where we get the story of Robin Hood, because Robin Hood had to deal with Richard's younger brother, John, who was being an oppressive king over the people of England. And so Richard couldn't stay in Jerusalem forever. And so instead, he made a peace treaty with Saladin, allowing Saladin to retain the city of Jerusalem but allowing Christians to have 
free travel in the land of Jerusalem and that the Muslims weren't allowed to go around killing the Christians. Now, what is most interesting about the stories of Richard and Saladin, however, is how peaceable these two men were to each other. One was a Christian, one was a Muslim, and yet the two men were actually rather honourable and peaceful in their wars with each other. There are stories about how Richard, when he grew sick, Saladin sent him some fruit. And there's another story that during a battle, Richard's horse was killed, and so Saladin sent him a new horse to replace it. And this is an interesting story, children, because in the Bible, Jesus tells us that even unbelievers, non-Christians, know how to do good works. And Saladin is a perfect example of that. He was a Muslim. He wasn't a Christian. And yet, he was able to be very nice to Richard, even though they were enemies. Richard was also rather nice to Saladin and used to write him letters urging peace and trying to be respectful, and, and Richard would say how much he honoured Saladin for being so gentle and generous and for being a good leader. Richard wrote to Saladin saying that, look, we're both caring leaders. You don't want to kill your soldiers. I don't want to kill my soldiers. You don't want more Muslims to die. I don't want more Christians to die. How about we just become friends and make peace? And so Jesus tells us that we shouldn't hate our enemies. We should love our enemies and pray for them. Now this doesn't mean that we can't ever go to war. The Bible tells us that the government has been given the right of the sword to defend our citizens and to fight against the enemies. But just because we have to go to war with a foreign nation or a foreign force, doesn't mean that we have to hate them. We can still love them and pray for them. And most importantly, we should always seek peace as soon as possible. Which is why Richard, as soon as he had conquered the city of Acre, had then already offered Saladin peace. But Saladin refused peace. And so... Richard kept prompting Saladin, going, look, we're both leaders. We both care about our own citizens. So how about we just stop this stupid fighting and just make peace? And so they did. And that, children, then, is the story of the Third Crusade. And that's the story of the Lion, the Turk, and the Holy Land. I've been your host, Reverend Jake Zabel. Goodbye and God bless.